All right. Hey, training camp. What's up? Welcome to our second YouTube premiere. Hope you're having a great Sunday. We got a special guest with us today. It's Jarek Bresky, the one and only. He's a stud athlete and such an amazing leader. And uh, I've just been blessed to have him in FCA. Blessed to be his friend. And um, you guys are going to get to hear some really cool stuff. I invited Jarek on because, well, for many reasons, guys. But first of all, I have watched how he has used his platform as an athlete to lead people to Christ. And I have not seen anything like it in FCA up to this point. And it's been really cool to watch. One of the main ways he does that is on Instagram, which I know some of you guys are maybe in middle school and you don't have an Instagram, which is great. Um, Cause you can spend a lot of time on, the, on that app, but you can also use it for really good things. And that's what Jer Derek has done. 20,000 followers on Instagram. That's like celebrity status on Instagram. That's like famous. So um, you guys are going to get to hear how that started and a little bit of Jarek's journey to kind of where, how he got where he is. But Jarek, welcome, man. Thanks so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us for training camp and just share a little bit about what God's doing in your life. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course, man. So you're a multi-sport athlete at Orchard Park. Um, you're an amazing, amazing leader. You have amazing parents, great family. So, you you know, you've obviously uh, they've impacted your leadership a ton, right? But where else have you found inspiration to step out and lead for Christ as an athlete? Do you have, like, leaders that you look up to or in the sports world or anywhere else? Um, I'd say a big thing is, like, I don't know, our pastor really encourages it. And, like, also going to, like, FCA. Like, I know that you guys really wanted us to, like, try to spread our faith with our friends. And I think that's where I kind of began is where I started is because I attended FCA two years ago. And that's where I kind of, like, got hooked on all this stuff. And I really wanted to start spreading the gospel with my teammates, my friends, anyone I really could. Um, So I think just, like, that encouragement. And then also, like, with my, as I said, my youth pastor also being a big – um role in that that's kind of what what started me for it so yeah that's amazing dude amazing um let's talk pro athletes real quick who you're a football player lacrosse player any other sports nope that's it who do you who's uh, we gotta just get some favorites who's your favorite who's your favorite lacrosse player probably gotta be josh byrne yeah, okay from yeah. the l banditos right yep Okay, sweet. They're pretty good. And then uh, what about football? Football? Hmm. I don't know. My guy was Gabe Davis, but he just got traded away. So I don't know now anymore. Probably, I don't know. Josh is pretty funny, though. Josh is really funny. You can't go wrong with that. Absolutely. Let's go. All right. Locked in. So, um, we want to talk to some of the athletes and this is going to be quick, be on here for 10 or 15 minutes, but what, you know, some practical ways that they can use the leadership training. We're doing uh like 60 something days and it with, and this year it's all leadership scriptures. And we just finished up a really amazing E3 leadership training where we learned to engage, equip and empower um, those around us. We made an E3 map, which includes like a, like a grouping of people that we know that we're praying for that, you know, we, we're going to ask God, like, what's the next step to kind of engage them, right? And then maybe set up some type of a huddle for them to learn more about God. And a lot of those yeah. people on our on our maps are not Christians. So, w like, one thing that you guys have done in your house is start a huddle um, for Orchard Park athletes. Tell us a little bit about what that looks like and how you've seen God working. Yeah, so... um I don't know, a big thing just kind of happened and it was, it clicked with me, it clicked with my brother and my family, like my mom, my dad, Um, that like that first night after coming home from FCA, like it was great. And then like, we were all had this discussion on like, do we want to start one of these in Orchard Park and get classmates and teammates and anyone else who wants to come to come here and learn about Christ. Um, And that's kind of where it started. That's awesome. Um, what does it look like at a huddle? What would you say if someone wanted to start a huddle? Like what would what are some good parts of a huddle that they should do? So ours are usually on Sundays, three to four thirty. And in the first 30 minutes, we are kind of 
we're snacking because sometimes we'll have like pizza and wings. Other times it'll just be like some chips and some fruits and everything, but we'll be snacking. And then like, we'll head downstairs, you know, during that time as well. And there's some video games to be played and ping pong. And that's kind of like, just like the meet and greet, like talking with your friends, hanging out for a little bit. And then we go back upstairs around three 30 and we go into one big group and we all kind of start off with some icebreakers and names and get to know each other. And then from there, we go into a message that's usually provided by you guys, FCA and something that we read off of and like with the Bible verse and the main message of it. And then after that, it'll be around four. We split up in small groups for 20 minutes, talk about that message, further questions. Um, I actually missed something. We, pray before so like when we come up and meet in a big group we first pray and then we get into the message uh usually do like activity and then during small groups at the end time we also pray and then that kind of wraps us up for us all right nice so food food never hurts anyone right a little fun yep <laughs> a little fellowship and then you know a message of the word and do you guys talk do you guys get like try to get the athletes to talk a little bit about it and like share their perspectives too. Oh yeah. That's usually what like the big time and small group is for is that with those message, like it's not just like me, my brother or my mom and dad, you know, or someone else who volunteered to do it. Like it's just delivering a message to everyone else. It's more of like an open ended message where you get multiple perspectives of like what you're listening to and what you're hearing. And I think that's powerful because like, when you're able to look at it from like a different view, it's just like you may have not thought of it that way. And then when you hear that, you're like, wow. And then you can like apply it to your life as well in some ways. Absolutely. That's awesome, man. Um, next question. So let's, let's shift over to Instagram. Like I said, you got like 20,000 people on there and uh, I know you got sports and tons of stuff going on. So you got time, you know, a lot of times when you're, like I've seen you posting like multiple times a day. I'm like, how, this guy is just preaching like every, every hour he's got a new, a new verse. Um, and I'm sure there's, you know, ebbs and flows, but like, how did you do that? I mean, how, how'd you get so many people to follow you? And like, why'd you start the Instagram page with Bible verses? Yeah. So first thing is why I started it is, I just thought of another way to be able to like reach out to people, not just FCA because we had FCA started at that point. And then I actually started on Snapchat with just like kind of like a story of like some close friends added to it. And they encouraged me and I got a lot of encouragement from that. And I felt like a pull to God to really like go all in with it and like not be scared or like timid, but really just put yourself out there. And that's when I like uploaded stuff to Instagram starting. And then by the grace of God, I was able to, gain followers and it also helped with um like people being able to like it repost it and i know i had a lot of that help in order to get those followers like i know at one point um damar hamlin reposted one of my videos and then that's where i started going kind of like i started uh getting a lot more followers like that night especially like when he reposted it and i think that was just i'm really thankful for that because without him i probably wouldn't be at the same spot on the instagram following as i am right now yeah, man. That's awesome. That's your, your faithfulness and your faith in God and then his favor on you, you know? So that's, yeah. that's awesome. Um, right. Can you share like some testimonies of how some of the, like maybe in the comments that people have said, like, oh, this is fire or just any, any testimonies of how it's impacting people? Yeah. So um, one person in particular, his name is Truman. I actually, kind of get, like I kept seeing him comment on my videos and then he started his own thing like where he was sharing devotionals as well and we kind of got to know each other and then we exchanged like Snapchat um, and we've like been talking and chatting it up ever since about the Lord and just being on fire for the Lord so I think that's just been something that's huge is because like I've learned from him and he's also like learned from me and just like the connections that you're able to make like are amazing. Amen bro that's awesome. Um, have you gotten any like negative feedback on social media because of what you're doing? Honestly, like it's like people would think, right. Like, you would think like you're going to post, it's like scary. You're going to get like, I have not gotten any negative comments. Like I honestly, like only positive feedback. I feel like also like 
in like in a way like you don't got to worry about it because like if someone's not going to want to watch you like they're just gonna swipe like and that's kind of like people just keep swiping and swiping now like a day so like it's harder to grab people's attention anyway so like they're not really going to take the time to like write a hate comment at you or whatever when they could just like swipe up so like it's really just the people that like are supporting you that are on there commenting and giving you encouragement to keep going with it that's awesome that's that's encouraging to anyone who wants to maybe take a step out you know the enemy wants us to believe that it's not going to work out and everyone's going to hate us and we're going to get rejected and persecuted but the lord goes before us and it might not even be as bad right so exactly that, yeah that's awesome man um well dude kudos to you man you're you're crushing it um what advice would you give to any training camp athletes that want to like you know really reach your team that's kind of what we've been focused on for the first half of training camp what what advice would you give to them um i'd probably say like embrace like what you feel like if you feel scared with it like embrace that feeling and go use that and like really just i don't know it's like you want to like build that relationship with your lord so that you're not scared of like and when you really feel like the holy spirit upon you like he's going to give you the words to say he's going to give you the courage to post it and he's also going to give you like that feeling and like that want to be able to share it with others. He's going to really make you want to be showing and spreading the word to others. So I feel like as you continue to get closer with God and you keep praying about your stuff and you keep taking those so-called like risks of like posting, right. Even though you're scared, even though like you may think it's weird or other may other people may think it's weird. Right. Um, That's where you kind of feel like the Holy spirit, like continue to grow inside of you. And then you really just, it keeps going and it keeps falling and keeps um, making you want to just spread the word more. Amen, bro. That's awesome. Anything else you'd want to share or um, if not, would you pray, just pray for us as we get ready for another week of training here? Yeah. Um, currently I actually, I want to like, am I able to shout out like a book that I've been reading? Yeah. Oh, of course. So, bro. Of course. Like, of course, the Bible, first of all, like get into your word because like that's key if you're not in your word or like praying constantly and like you don't have to go crazy on it. Like we know we're athletes. We know we got busy lives, but like really make sure you're in your word and trying to understand it, too. It's one thing just to read past chapters and it's another thing to really understand them and take the time to do that. And then a second thing is I've been reading a prayer called or been reading a book called Dangerous Prayers, and it's like literally in the past week I've been reading, reading it. It's been like changing my life. It's been crazy. Um, it talks about like three dangerous prayers and it's send me, break me and search me. And one like thing of it, as we're talking about Instagram and like spreading the word to others, like send me out into the world so I can preach the gospel. And it's like that, like sometimes it will be scary. And on the other side of that adversity, uh, you'll see God's gift. So I don't know. I've been really liking it. I would encourage it for any athletes who want to read it. Absolutely, man. We will, uh, we're going to post a replay of this in our email that goes out tomorrow. And we'll also link that book um, this week. Yeah. We'll put that on all our emails. So anyone can just click that on Amazon and check it out per, uh, per Jared's recommendation. Yeah. Sweet brother. Thanks so much for taking the time to do this, man. Will you pray uh, for the program and close this out? Yeah, here? of course. Lord, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. Lord, I pray that anyone who has feeling this tug on their heart to spread the word with others, that they would take that bold step of faith, Lord, that they know that the Holy Spirit will protect them and will wash over them and give them the courage and the words to say while they are spreading it on Instagram or with their friends at school or teammates at a sports practice, whatever it may be, Lord. Let them take that bold step of faith. Do not let the devil have them be brainwashed or brain corrupt where they don't know exactly um, like what is ahead of them and what good could be caused out of their simple act to take on the adversaries, Lord. So we thank you for all the blessings. Continue to allow us to main, remain grateful as we go throughout our week. And yeah, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Jerry, you the man, brother. Thanks so much for being with us. Yeah. All right. Thank you. No doubt. Guys, let's make it a great week and uh, we'll see you in the emails tomorrow.